For this final flight, we're going from Eagle, Colorado to Aspen, Colorado, and it's less than a 30-mile flight, but we're going to cross some serious mountainous terrain, and it's going to be a challenging trip. So let's take a look. There are three SIDs at Eagle, the Bever 1, the Gypsum 6, and the Meeker 3, and I don't like any of them today in the Baron. Let's look at those and see why. The Bever 1 is an RNAV SID, which on first glance goes the wrong direction, and we might rule it out because of that. The Roubaix, Belgian, and Sparked transitions all take us well away from where we're going. But we don't actually have to file one of the transitions. What's sometimes overlooked is the option we have of filing just the shared portion of the SID to Bever in this case. So here we'd file Bever1.Bever if we wanted that. Direction isn't really the problem here though. Sometimes in the mountains you're just stuck with departing in the opposite direction that you ultimately want to go. The issue here is the climb gradient that's required of 740 feet per nautical mile to 10,200 feet. If we're climbing at 120 knots or 2 miles per minute, that would require 1,500 feet per minute of climb. And at these high density altitudes, the true airspeed, and as a result the ground speed, would be even higher. That's not happening on two good engines, and if one fails, we're extra out of luck. Now that we're required to make climb gradients with one engine inoperative in a light piston twin, but I like to know that I at least have some time to turn towards lower terrain if something happens. Regardless, we can't make that gradient here even on two engines, not to 10,000 feet anyway. There are a couple other interesting notes on this procedure. One note specifically calls out rapidly rising terrain and trees west and south of the airport. That's because the standard IFR climb criteria doesn't necessarily give sufficient clearance, which is confirmed by another note here which says that obstacle protection is not insured for turns that are delayed beyond the departure end of the runway. So we need to turn before reaching the end of the runway here. Another note says not to exceed 210 knots until established direct to Coper, and that's presumably because the wider turning radius then would cut too close to that same terrain. The Gypsum 6 departure does take us pretty far in the wrong direction. And as I said, that might just be something we have to live with here. Sometimes the only climb routes in the mountains are in the wrong direction. Again, though, we have climb gradient issues. For runway 7, it's 580 feet per nautical mile to 12,000 feet, which is less of a gradient than for the Bever Sid, but to a higher altitude. It's still probably too much, and anyway, the wind doesn't favor runway 7. We could request runway 7 anyway, but the tailwind would make the climb gradient even tougher to achieve, so requesting the downwind runway wouldn't be helpful here anyway. For runway 25 then, it's 815 feet per nautical mile to 9200 feet, which is too much for us. The Meeker 3 is the last one left, and it's kind of the worst of both worlds. It sends us 50 miles in the wrong direction and requires an 815 foot per mile climb all the way to 15,000 feet. So that's the last of the SIDs, but we're not out of luck here yet, because the takeoff minimums document does actually offer one more option. The takeoff minimums entry for Eagle says that both runways require 4,200 foot ceilings and at least 3 miles visibility for a climb in visual conditions. Right now visibility is about 5 and ceilings are, coincidentally, 4,200 overcast. The departure procedure then says that for a climb in visual conditions, we should cross Eagle County Regional Airport northeast bound at or above 10,600 MSL, and then proceed on the Kremling 212 radial to the Kremling VOR. And when executing this visual climb over the airport, we should notify ATC prior to departure. There's no climb gradient required then because we're required to maintain visual contact with the obstacles we're trying to avoid as we climb over the airport. And also there are no obstacles directly over the airport, so if we stay there, we're okay. A ceiling of at least 4,200 is required because we need to climb visually to 10,600 MSL, which is 4,200 AGL. Most VCOAs end there. You climb to an altitude from which you can continue to climb in any direction to a safe in route altitude. But on this one, there's a specific direction that you need to climb at that point, which is on the Kremling 212 degree radial inbound to Kremling. At that point, we'll be at a safe altitude to continue in any direction, but in all likelihood at some point before reaching Kremlin, we'll be above ATC's minimum vectoring altitude, and they'll send us on our way then. So we're still heading the wrong way for a bit, but there's no way around that at Eagle. The VCOA also solves the single engine climb problem because while we won't be able to climb much, or at all probably, if one engine fails at these altitudes, we'll be directly over the airport. We're supposed to let ATC know if we're going to use the VCOA, and generally that's the case because naturally ATC doesn't want to be surprised by what we do after departure. It's a good idea to let them know when calling for the clearance, 
as well as in the flight planner marks, because that way they know not to assign one of the SIDs that we won't be able to accept anyway. We could put no SIDs in the remarks section, but specifying the VCOA, which is what we do want to do, is one better than that.